Hi, I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back if you're a regular visitor. And if you're new here, welcome to you. And I'd love it if you subscribed. So today, December the 31st, 2022, I thought I'd bring one of my short heads up videos so that we can look at all the astrological energies to help you navigate any New Year's Eve shenanigans, parties and general merrymaking and see what we have in the energy today. The first thing I'm going to highlight, because the energy is actually quite interesting, it's, it's, it's very supportive and encouraging of a fun time tonight, or all day actually, because the moon today moves into Taurus. Now, Taurus, of course, is all about luxury. It's about indulgence. So it's about good food, good wine, dressing up, making oneself look lovely and glamorous. And that doesn't matter whether you're male or female or whatever you are, we can all dress up and feel our radiant bests with this moon moving into Taurus energy. The other thing about the chart which I noticed is that both Jupiter and Neptune are right on the midheaven. And this is quite interesting because just to put it into context, the, the ascendant of this chart is Gemini. So it encourages communication. So I do feel that in general, we're all going to be feeling like we want to get out there and really talk to people because we've had, what, three years, two, two to three years where all these kind of general celebrations for New Year, for example, have just not been possible. So this really is super good energy to actually get out there and communicate and have contact with people. Now, this Jupiter and Neptune on the Midheaven, I think this gives some kind of um, wings to romantic dreams. So whatever it is that you're kind of perhaps hoping for, that can unfold in the new year, then it is well supported by this wonderful beneficial sort of energy of my wonderful big boy Jupiter and Neptune that allows us to dream. And it's like dream big with Neptune conjunct Jupiter, make those dreams big, wish for everything, wish for the world. And you know what, sometimes dreams do come true. And the interesting thing is that both Jupiter and Neptune are kind of still sex styling, even though Jupiter has moved into Aries, they're sex styling Pluto and Venus. Now they're in Capricorn and Mercury is also in this aspect. So we've got this energy in Capricorn of Mercury, who is all about communication, Venus, which is feminine energy, but it's also about love, relationship, also value. And I think with regard to Capricorn, Venus is kind of standing here in her sense of self-worth and value because Capricorns always work hard for what they want to achieve. And the fact that they are both conjunct Pluto our planet of transformation in the last degrees of Capricorn before he dips his toes into Aquarius in the new year. With these three being sextiled by Jupiter and Neptune, it's like if you've got romantic dreams, you know what? Dream them. Why shouldn't or couldn't the best happen for you? And because it also brings in the energy of the 10th house, which can be our kind of um, standing in public, our, our public image, our career, our passion, then dream big for those plans too. There is absolutely no reason why you can't transform your ideas and dreams into some kind of concrete reality. You see, Capricorn is about structure, and building. So it really does bode well for constructive dreams. Now, the other lovely energy we've got is that the sun, that is of course in Capricorn at this time of year, 
is making a lovely trine aspect to Uranus, my big boy of the unexpected, of shocks, of all sorts of kind of um, extraordinary happenings that can happen with Uranus and the North Node, which is our collective destiny. Now, they two are both in Taurus. And of course, in the next sort of 24, 36 hours, the moon in Taurus is going to be conjunct both these symbols, both the North Node and Uranus in Taurus. Now, the sun is making a trine. This is helpful. The sun is in the part of the chart to do with significant close relationships. So there's quite a kind of a lovely feel about this New Year's Eve energy that you could just meet that special someone if you're looking or that the, 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 the things that you plan to do with significant people in your life are unexpectedly blessed and turn out unexpectedly well because Uranus and the North Node are in the 11th house of this chart, which is so much about the community at large. So get out there, mix, mingle, meet people, see people. You just never know what might happen. Now, what else have we got going on? Because Mars, of course, which is still retrograde, is in Gemini and it's in the 12th house. Now, this is like um, the, everything comes at a price. So if we want to have this really exciting, bountiful, enjoyable New Year's experience, whether it's with a small group of friends or just one significant person, or you're out there in a bigger kind of um, collection of people where you maybe hope to meet someone, that Mars is saying, Take your time in the sense that, you see, Mars is in Gemini. Mars doesn't like Gemini. And Mars is kind of struggling as it moves against the tide. Look within. Where might you be moving against the tide, which is not in your best interests? Are you actually being kind to you? Are you serving yourself well? Are you trying to make things happen which maybe aren't meant for you and that by trying to make something happen, you're blocking what's really meant for you, which is probably a lot better. These are some of the things I think we have to reflect on with Mars retrograde in the 12th in Gemini in this chart. I think on a world stage, we are going to hear about um, significant kind of events that are going to be happening overseas from, you know, in, in far distant places. I think healing is going to be a big theme of this new year collectively for the world. It may be, and I don't know because I haven't sort of explored it, but there may be meditation groups that have been set out, set up to send out world healing. If there aren't, there should be. If you want to do that in a smaller sense, to have a little ritual for yourself, to actually send out really positive healing energies and vibrations to the collective, it would be a super use of this new beginning energy that we get with a new year. Because Chiron in Aries is now direct. And with Jupiter in Aries, at the beginning of this sign, at the beginning of the zodiac wheel, we really do start the year with a wonderful opportunity to make much better decisions, not only for ourselves, but collectively. So be mindful of that. And all I want to say is have a super wonderful day today. And if you are out partying, take care, look after yourselves, don't drink and drive and just kick back and have some fun because I think we all need to just relax a bit. It's, it's very much sometimes about staying in the moment, staying in the moment and enjoying this wonderful moment of collective feeling of hope of what we might be moving forwards into in the new year because the energy is different. It is shifting. 
And if you want to take a deeper look at my overview for 2023, go to my go to my overview for 2023. And in the description box of the overview, you will find links to all the individual zodiac signs. And you can check out the significant aspects that I've highlighted for each zodiac sign. So I just want to wish you Happy New Year and to welcome in 2023 in the style that is appropriate for you. And well, just take care. And thank you so much for joining me for this medium length heads up video about New Year. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.